Welcome to our midweek online service from Cheadle Parish. It's great to have you here and you're in for a treat as we're thinking uh, of our theme today as prayer. And Stan a bit later on is going to open God's word to us and um, share from the scriptures. Um, but in the meantime, let's take a moment to do exactly that, to pray as we begin our service. God, our Father, we thank you for the grace you have shown us in Jesus Christ, that we can approach you through his death um, in our prayers. And so we ask that as we share together this, this morning, um, that you may meet with us, teach us your truth, and grant us your grace. For our Saviour Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And so we're going to sing our first hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. We have every blessing in Christ. Indeed, the Apostle Paul, in the beginning of Ephesians, says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And indeed, those blessings come to us by faith, trusting his grace alone to give us all that he will bless us with. And it's that faith that we express now as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, which has been shared through the centuries to sum up what Christians believe. So join with me if you share in that faith as we say together, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Well, that faith that we share, of course, it is a faith that Jesus is our saviour as well as our Lord, that he calls us to approach him for his grace. Indeed, in the Psalms, David writes this, I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, and surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. That's from Psalm 51. And that's why in the scriptures we're called, be seeking that truth in the inner place, in our hearts, to be honest before God as we confess our sins to him, to recognise that for which our Saviour died, and that to which he calls us to confess our sins to him. So let's use again those famous words, as we confess our sins to God. We pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and the wickedness we have committed time after time by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings. The memory of them weighs us down. The burden of them is too great for us to bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What a joy to know that the grace of God is there for our forgiveness and to bring us into fellowship and relationship with him. And the implications of that we're going to hear shared as Stan reads to us from God's word and then opens that up to us as we think about Jesus teaching on the privilege of prayer. So over to you, Stan. Our reading for the service today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6 at be and beginning at the fifth verse. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Anicia Faltonia Proba was a 5th century Roman noblewoman who was also a Christian believer. She was also rather well connected. She knew personally the man widely considered to be one of the greatest preachers of the first centuries after Christ, John Chrysostom, as well as also knowing the man widely considered to be one of the greatest theologians of the first centuries after Christ, Augustine. But the only reason we know anything about her is because Augustine wrote her a letter on the subject of prayer, 
She had written to him because she was afraid that she wasn't praying as she should. And in his reply, Augustine set out some principles for prayer that I would like to look at as part of our time together today, hopefully as an encouragement in our own prayer lives. His first principle was that before you decide what to pray for, you must become a particular kind of person. You must account yourself desolate in this world, he wrote, however great the prosperity of your lot may be. The scales must have fallen from your eyes, and you must see clearly that no matter how great your earthly circumstances become, they can never bring you the lasting peace, happiness and consolation that are to be found only in Christ. Unless you have that in mind, Augustine wrote, your prayers may well go wrong. And this touches what is one of the main themes of Augustine's writings. We must see that our heart's loves are disordered, he said. It's not that it's wrong to love people or things other than God, but all too often we get them in the wrong order, hence they are disordered. Things we ought to love third or fourth become first in our hearts, and God, whom we should love supremely, is sometimes that we, someone whom we may acknowledge, but whose blessing and presence are all too often not as important to us as, say, prosperity, success, status, family, love or pleasure. Augustine's argument is that we need to recognise this heart disorder and how much it distorts everything we do and say and think. And until we see this, he writes, our prayers can easily become part of the problem rather than part of the answer. So, for example, if we were to look at to our financial prosperity as our main source of safety and confidence in life, then when our wealth is in grave jeopardy, we may well cry out to God and ask for his help. But our prayers would be little more than treating God like the genie in the lamp asking God to give us what we want, please look after my money for me, rather than asking him to show us what he wants. Is there something you're wanting me to learn from this? Once we've recognised our need for God's wisdom, if we are to ever to pray rightly, then, says Augustine, then we are ready to pray. But what should we pray for? Well, says Augustine, and when he wrote this, I'm guessing that he probably did do with a bit of a smile on his face. You should pray, he says, for what everyone else prays for. Pray for a happy life. The question is, of course, what will bring a happy life? Because if you've embraced Augustine's first principle of prayer, that you need to look to God first and foremost for everything that you need and for your heart's desire, if you've embraced that, you will have realised that the comforts and rewards and pleasures of this world can only ever give fleeting excitement and can never bring lasting peace and happiness. How can, could they? Instead, says Augustine, we should pray as the psalmist does in Psalm 27. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, this doesn't mean that we're not allowed to pray for anything else other than knowing God, loving God and pleasing God. The Lord's Prayer that I read out just before shows us that we need many things. However, if we have made God our greatest love, and if knowing and pleasing him and wanting to do his will is our heart's desire above all things, then surely it must transform what and how we pray for in life. Augustine then goes on to quote from Proverbs chapter 30. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but only give me my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonour the name of my God. Now, such a prayer might well sound much the same as many prayers, but its motivation is very different from many prayers because it's all about God. It's all about giving him the glory and the honour in all that we do and say and think and how we live. Our Father in heaven, may your name be hallowed above all things. May your name be honoured and glorified above all things on earth as it is in heaven, starting with me, with my heart, with my life. 
I don't know if it's ever struck you that whenever you read the prayers of Paul in his letters, he rarely prays for specific circumstances or situations. Now, I'm not saying that he never prayed for such things, for as he writes in his letter to the Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God. But note what comes just before that statement. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. The Lord is near. And so he goes on. We therefore have no need to be anxious, for God is near. So seek his face. Seek his guidance. And the result of such praying? The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see his argument? Yes, he says, come to God about everything that's on your heart, but do so knowing that God is already near, that God hears your prayer, that God loves you with an everlasting love, and that as Paul put elsewhere, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. You see, if you read Paul's prayers, much like Augustine after him, you'll notice that his focus and major concern is that his hearers, being rooted and established in love, may have power with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Yes, we have wonderful freedom to come before God with every anxious thought and concern that is on our hearts and minds. But the prayers of Paul and Augustine are all about God, of recognising how much we need his wisdom, his guidance, a knowledge of his love each and every day of our lives. Isn't that a wonderful prayer to pray? Not just for ourselves, but surely for everyone we know, each and every day, whatever our circumstances. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you uh, for the encouragement of your uh, godly people down through the ages as they wrote to us of you and your love for us and tried to teach us what it means to be your people. I pray that as, as we go through our life, including our prayers, that we may seek always your honour, your glory, your guidance, your peace, your leading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in the light of God's word teaching us about the privilege and the joys of prayer, there's only one thing we can do, and that is to turn now to our prayers. So let's pray. God our Father, we thank you first for this awesome privilege of prayer. Thank you that we know we are heard by you through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Thank you that he intercedes and by your spirit, uh, with groans that we can't even express, we know that our deepest needs are heard and understood by the God to whom we turn. So grant us grace as we seek to pray now, that we may pray into your will and that you may use our prayers for the blessing of others, even as you bless us um, through the gift of grace that you give. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray first for the world to which you have called us. Uh, we think about the struggles that are ongoing with respect to the pandemic and particularly pray that as things begin to open up, you will give people restraint and wisdom to not uh, perpetuate and spread the disease, um, but also not to be paranoid and restrict normal life as a result. We pray particularly for your church, that we might be exemplary in balancing both uh, safety and good regard for the health of others, but also community and the desire to support and love each other. Help us to show and share your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray particularly for our community here in Cheadle, those to whom you have called us to be your witnesses. Um, Lord, give us opportunity to speak to friends and neighbours, family, as we give a reason for the hope that we have, and as we point people beyond uh, the restrictions that we've been experiencing to the promises of eternal glory and fellowship with you. So Lord, give us courage as a church to speak more boldly 
and to bring the gospel more simply, and indeed to be courageous as we speak the truth in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we thank you that you know us from the inside out. You know our needs before that we even um, can articulate them ourselves. And so we pray that you may work through us in blessing others as we pray for them now. We think about those who are struggling with the ongoing effects of COVID um, and the fears of getting back to normal. We pray that you may grant them your grace. We pray for those who are themselves ill and are struggling for strength those who've been bereaved and are feeling the pain and darkness of grief, and those who are lost without you, who are in need of finding your faith and grace to save them. So thinking of individuals that we know in the moment of quiet, we bring them before you now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you know the needs of each much better than we do. And so we pray that your grace will be sufficient for their weakness, that first and foremost you may make yourself known to them, and then work in them according to what is pleasing to your will. And we, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's bring our prayers together as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, before we uh, finish our service, we're going to sing again a great hymn that picks up the privilege and the joy it is to find Jesus in our prayers. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. <laughs>
So thank you for joining us as we've shared together around God's Word. You're welcome to join us again on Sunday at either of our churches at 10.30 or online um, or 6 p.m. live at St Mary's in the evening as well. And um, there is a live midweek service at uh, St Cuthbert's um, with communion at, 10 um, at 12 o'clock on a Wednesday as well. So join us as we share together around all God's word and as we seek to proclaim Jesus to the world. So let me close us down with a final prayer. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you for his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope you'll be able to uh, see us again soon. And may God go with you in this week. God bless.